We're gonna be making the lid. We're gonna have a two-part part studio, multi-part part studio. We're gonna do it by extruding a profile. Check out this flat view. That also includes our lid. It's got our lips. It's got our uh, hymns, or will, by the time we're done with it. It's gonna have its hymns. Cool, you can see that we've got two parts in the part studio. And we're going to build that lid. We're gonna build it by adding flanges to create the sidewalls. I did a move face. And then we hem it after we uh, put a flange on it as well. So I'm gonna do what I normally do, duplicate this part, delete those steps, and re-demonstrate them for you. Boom, it's all gone, all of it. Now I will say that my feature tree may look a little bit different than past videos or your feature tree. As long as our model space is about the same, it's fine. Uh, I just end up making so many versions and variations and demonstrations that they get a little messy after a while. Last video, we did our corner folds and we've got our hem box. We've got our case box bottom as close to done as possible. Now we're gonna do the lid. So we're gonna start a sketch. We've got the sketch application open and we are sketching in the right plane. I have the right plane selected. In fact, we're gonna look right at the right plane by clicking that face on that dice, that navigation dice near upper right hand corner of your screen. What we wanna do when we sketch the lid is we wanna reference the existing geometry of the box. If we change the box sizes, then the lid should change with it as well. And we'll get into that later. We draw a vertical line to the side of the box and above the box somewhere. And then we draw a horizontal line. Now see the little small dash marks showing up next to my lines? That's what you want visible. You don't want anything else, just those little dash marks, that's a constraint symbol. We want that little dash mark. Once you have two vertical lines and a horizontal line drawn, We're gonna go ahead and utilize another constraint. This constraint's called equals. Use the equal constraint on the two side lips because we know that ideally those lips will be the same size if we did our project correctly. And you'll notice that they sh change into the same size, but they're still blue because we never told them what size they have to be. But if I change the size of one, the size of the other one automatically changes it. Let's go ahead and tell it the size it has to be, which we're gonna do quarter of an inch. One fourth of an inch is 0.25. And notice that the other one updates. Now notice everything shrunk, so it maintains proportion. But we can't have it scaled down like this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use this project use tool the project use tool is used to project the tree from another part of your model onto the plane you're trying to sketch on so what we've just what we're doing is we're projecting the corners onto that right plane so we can reference them make sure that you have the use convert function turned on on your toolbar your sketch toolbar there and then click these outside corners like a lot of the tools on the dimension toolbar it will remain on until you turn it off. And if you rotate the screen, you can see, oh yeah, that's what's happening. Occasionally you'll see sketch tools just turn on and off without me appearing seemingly to be clicking. That's because out of habit, sometimes I use keyboard shortcuts. And one of the things, just keyboard shortcuts you can use to turn something off is just to hit the escape key. So you want to turn use slash project off so that you're operating your select tool for the next part of the video here. Now I'm going to take my edge and I'm gonna hover over it and I'm gonna get that golden symbol there that's gonna let me know that I am trying to get this to match a constraint. I'm gonna do the same to the other side and drag it up into this golden symbol. Now both lines should turn black, not the endpoints, the lines, simply because the lines will be confined and won't be able to move easily. 
So let's talk about the constraints. We have constraints here. When we check show constraints on our sketch bar, drag those, we can drag these out, just like we like to drag our dimensions out so we can visibly see that when you hover over a constraint, it shows you what that constraint is doing. It tells you this coincident has to be coincide. These two things have to be coincident. Uh, these two things have to be vertically aligned and these two things have to be horizontally aligned. When you hover over a constraint, it highlights the, the uh, geometry that is constrained. Make sure that a vertical constraint is set between that corner point and the end of our lid. Just because I don't like blue geometry anywhere in my work, I'm gonna go ahead and put 10, a distance of 10 from the origin to the top of the lid as a place holding dimension. Eventually we'll put them right on top of each other. We'll even animate them. But as a place holding dimension, put 10 in there just so we end up with a fully defined geometry. It's just habit, once that's habit, it's a good habit to have, and that's the way we prefer it. All right, we're done with that sketch. Now we're gonna use our sheet metal model tool and under our sheet metal model tool we're going to select extrude this time now this sheet metal extrudes a little different than our normal extrude feature because our, our normal extrude feature you may remember from the dog years we couldn't extrude open geometry geometry that wasn't a shape a bunch of lines connected but not a shape we couldn't extrude that well with sheet metal model extrude we can and so you select the, the lines that you want to extrude, which are all the lines in our lid profile, as you see me doing here. And it'll want to grow that and turn it into a sheet metal object. We go up to face. We're gonna go ahead and click the face that we want it to extrude to. And that gives us half a lid. If you look at that, we get half a lid. Well, we hit second in direction. And when we hit second in direction, we get it and, and select the opposite face, we get the lid extruding off both sides. And so now we have a lid that fits perfectly on our box. Uh, we've referenced the box just like we did in building to figure out the dimensions for our lid. Now, check this out. You don't have to do this. You can just watch this part. If you wanna do it for fun, you can. I'm going to go in and just change a dimension on my box. Check it out. The lid updated automatically. I'm going to change the length, which is what we just did. And here's why we chose up to face in this situation. We could have done a symmetric extrude and we could have picked the dimensions half a 10 or half of 13.75 and made it go both ways. But because we did up to face, and you just saw it happen, you can change the dimension of the original sketch and the lid will update as well. Had we put in a symmetric constraint of five and a half or whatever it ends up being, it would have stayed five and a half or whatever it ended up being. I'm gonna go in and name this, uh, this sheet metal model lid profile extrude, not thicken like we utilized last time. And I'm gonna go ahead and put in the notes that we went up to face. Now we add the front lip. We use the flange command to add the front lip. Set it to the same height. We're gonna call that end wall lid flange. So we've made our lid. We have our flat view showing our lid when we come up to this drop down at the top but we don't have our hems and we need to add our hems to the box
I'm gonna make our lips bigger, 0.5 instead of 0.25. That way we can go ahead and add a quarter inch hem and not feel so crowded in our space. And this end wall hinge, this is a good example of what I was closing, what I, the end of our, the last step we were doing when I was talking about up to face and design changes down the road. That front lip didn't update automatically to the side, the sides updating. That's because we entered an actual dimension. But if we had gone in and entered up to entity and selected those faces when we went in and did that 0.5, it would have done so automatically, which when we get in very complex models, you'll learn to appreciate very quickly. Activating our hem tool, we can go ahead and select the three ends that we want to hem. And, oh, look at that. It's going to happen easy peasy, no problem at all. But let's take a closer look. Let's take a closer look after we practice the very important habit of naming your features. Let's zoom in there. What do we got going on? The hem is on the outside of the box. Which isn't not how it's not how we built it. I suppose we could have, but we didn't. So I'm gonna click the double arrows in my mini window, editing the lid hems, and it won't let me do it because now we have a collision. It won't. It won't. It'll collide. It will collide. So we select that hem. We got these two hems, and we try this one. Notice how everything turns red. I'm gonna just move the rollback bar above my lid hems. And I'm gonna go ahead and try and pretend that there, that feature's not there because it's not with the rollback bar rolled above it. And we're gonna go ahead and make an edit like we did in one of our earlier videos where we moved face. All right, these are the two move faces we're going to select is the side faces. Uh, the, the the ends of the side walls, the front ends of the side walls, we're gonna select move face and make sure that the direction is cutting the face away, not adding to it. Initially, we this shows it adding to it. We're going, right now it's showing it subtracting. And that's what we want. We're gonna, we're gonna set that dimension to so once you have that move face at 50 thousandths, 0 0.050, you can drag your rollback bar over. I moved ahead on you guys and edited it out, but I dragged the rollback bar back to the bottom. The hems should generate and work this time, all three, and we have a completed lid. If you look at the flat view, you'll see the hems. Well, we'll put a cap on that for now.